Welcome! Uh, today in the stream we're going to focus mainly on building lenses because that's what I'm doing right now. So taking all this random stuff, plastic shells and stuff, and uh, turning it into finished lenses. Um, this is just kind of what I have to work on and I know that a lot of people are curious about moving lenses stuff uh, and want to hear about that. Um, but, you know, I need to get this done, so we're working on this right now. Um, oh, my scratching squares outside, oh well. Um, um, also, a cool thing about today, I want to talk to you guys because I've got, I've got some cool, cool plans for the stream. I haven't streamed in a while, but um, I've done some research on what it takes to stream on different platforms and stuff, and a lot of uh, a lot of what goes into streaming and stuff. So, um, got cool stuff coming up there, and so, you know, I'll still do little streams like this, but uh, you know, I want to actually make it a little more legitimate, make it a, um, you know, I've done I've done good higher quality production value stuff with the green screen and stuff, but um, I'm not really satisfied. Looking at my most recent video, I'm not really satisfied like with my background and all that. So I'm gonna go and do a lot to make that more like presentable and stuff and really, really turn it into a show and stuff. Um, um, sorry, Derek, I, Derek's asking about the shell file. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that I have a, a tendency to kind of, you know, I, I have requests that come to me from all different angles. And so I kind of naively just try to tackle all of the requests at once. And I, there, I will get to the ASM2 shell and stuff, but for right now, my my priority has to get be getting these done. Because I just have people that have been waiting for so long. And I'll be honest with you guys, it, it casts this like gray cloud over everything I do. Like I can't, you know, I, I, I'm just always so behind on these shells. So I'm really just kind of shutting everything else out right now. And um, I wanted to do this stream so it didn't seem like I'm done with that or like giving up on that. Um, but these are where it's at. And I'll, I'll do 3D printable files and tutorials on the face shell, but right now, just this. I need to get these done. Um, that's like for my own sanity's sake. I've, I've been saying that for like months now, but um, that's that's what I'm working on. Um, so yeah, so it's fun to uh, be back here. It's been a while. It's been like a month since I've actually done a stream where, you know, I can see what you guys are saying and stuff. Um, so it's cool to see you guys again, like, uh, you know, Derek and Chris and uh, L. Hey, L. <laughs> cool to, to see all you guys tuning in again. Um, it's always fun to hang out and talk to you guys while I build stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, so um, what I need to start with here, so I'm kind of doing something while I'm talking to you guys, is I actually need to glue magnets onto this shell so that I can glue the magnets onto these lenses. Um, so I'm going to start doing that. Um, start by putting a lens on that already has its magnets and then I take some extra magnets I have here wherever they are here they are Ooh. take these extra magnets and pin it down come on so now it's just kind of sitting in its grooves um, waiting to have those magnets applied to it Oh, cool. Uh, Chris just mentioned that he's making the like homemade movable lenses. That's neat. Um, I, uh, I've never really, uh, I've, I've had a lot of people talking, asking about the like the homemade version of the suit from the trailers. For one thing, I typically avoid trailers. Uh, Spider-Man movies are probably not the, the trailers I should be avoiding since I work on the stuff. Like I haven't watched most of the newer trailers because they just ruin way too much information from the movie. Um, I mean, it's not like it hasn't already been ruined already, but, um, you know, I kind of, I didn't even really know, know about that until people started posting a bunch of pictures and sharing a bunch of stuff about it. Um, and I, it kind of reminds me of the first movie when he, he does the, uh, the human spider, um, suit rather than his finished like good one and I've never you know I've, I've thought about doing that one and um, it's kind of its own novelty but you know my my interest in the stuff is doing the like really sleek polished stuff um, that's kind of what attracts me to it um, 
And so I've not really um, ever uh, uh, done any of those kind of like homemade ones. Oh, here's, Cor here's Corin. Um, yeah, Corin, Corin is one of the, the people that I owe a shell to right now. And um, it's hard. He, he asked for like an updated queue. It's difficult because I just have you know, a lot of people, like, uh, right now I'm, I, I'm finishing a set of lenses that I didn't get out to, um, who was it? It was Steve's. Yeah, these are Steve's lenses, and I didn't get them out to him. I, I sent an order with just mesh lenses. For some reason, I thought it was only the mesh lenses that he, he was owed, and, um, and so that's, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where, um, and then after that, it's, Byung, who's been waiting for a long time, so it's it's difficult because I have to like kind of get into the nitty gritty of the list. But um, I'm just just no, I'm just trying to get out through all these as soon as possible. Super dark in my garage here, but I'm trying to find my little uh, sanding tool. Thought I had everything prepared. I guess not. Where did I put that thing? Super clean out here, as you can see. Not messy at all. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. I just needed to find my little sanding tool that I use. Okie dokie. So this is what I'm talking about. It's a little uh, magnet sanding tool that let, allows me to uh, put these magnets onto this base and scratch them. It holds them still. reading comments. Kristen, Kristen, thank you for your compliment. And um, she said that she's trying to make moving lenses with the mechanical component, or with the um, the mechanical lenses with actual electronics, like with, uh, with motors and stuff. Um, there's a reason I kind of stared away from that. Well, for starters, I'm not really that experienced with making um, uh, like Arduino things and um, and using like servo motors and stuff, I, I have a, bunch, a lot of that stuff and I've been meaning to learn it over the years, but I've just never had a project where I, I dive in and tackle that huge learning curve because there's a little bit of coding involved and um, a lot of electrical engineering that goes into that and it's, it's difficult. Um, but what I do know, I've always made puppets and stuff like my whole life. And so basically as soon as that that trailer dropped a year ago, I had a pretty clear idea of how I was going to do it, and I'm still using that method. Um, but uh, I, I just couldn't imagine having electronics and motors and stuff inside of a face shell next to my face. For one, I would need to put another face shell between the two of those for safety, just so you didn't burn yourself or some kind of protective layer in there, and I'm sure the other makers do. But that's another layer of, of thickness. Um, and uh, and I think heat would be a huge issue because it gets so hot inside of a face shell because, you know, we already, it's difficult because the ventilation is covered by um, spandex. And so um, I think it's it's difficult already to deal with that heat. And then if you had were throwing motors and um, servos and stuff on top of that, I think you'd struggle even more with it. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's kind of some of the main reasons why I went with my puppetry method. And also, my puppetry method probably costs like a tenth as much, you know, in, in materials and components as, you know, all the stepper motors and everything you'd need, and the control board. So there are a lot of things that are better about it. Um, people might... Um, people might... Uh, Um, people might kind of argue about the control method, um, but I mean, you have to control it no matter what. And if you have electronic stuff, you're going to need like a power source and all that stuff. So, I mean, you're still having to deal with that stuff no matter what. Um, where did those magnets go? Magnets love to disappear. There they are. Um...
yeah, you could do that. Um, Kristen said she's not doing Arduinos or anything. She's just using nine volt battery and control board. Um, the closest thing I've ever done, if you look at my video history uh, on my page, um, I did an Iron Man suit with the moving faceplate. But again, I don't know much about like Arduinos and stuff. So all I did was I opened up an electronic, you know, an RC car and I took its insides out and kind of repurposed the motors for the wheels for the movement of the face shell. And it worked okay. Um, it didn't have enough torque to lift the face shell on its own. If I were to do it again, I think there'd be a few different things I would do that would probably fix that pretty easily. But um, I kind of had to flick my head up to get the facial to go up, but it went down really easily and really quick too, compared to all the other Arduino ones. Um, uh, so that was really fun, but it's kind of, you know, uh, to why I, why I brought that up is it, it reminds me of like that experimentation with batteries and motors and stuff. Like sometimes you burn out motors and it's just the most frustrating thing. Um, but you know, puppetry is, uh, uh, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty experimental too. It's difficult not to have everything, you know, kind of break and stuff. Um, here's my glue. Thought I had everything ready. Just need super glue. Oh, there it is, hiding. Oh yeah, I guess, while uh, while we're sitting here, I could I could look back at the uh, moving lenses again. I haven't fixed it yet because, like I said, um, I still need, you know, to finish um, these face shells. And uh, also, um, the repair job on it is a little. Um, uh, bye, VV Meezy, and thanks for turning it, tuning in. Um, sorry if I'm not giving you guys all the shout-outs that you deserve. I'm kind of distracted always when I'm doing these streams and reading intermittent comments. I'm sure it can be frustrating when I, I kind of miss huge chunks, of, uh, like questions and stuff. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. That's that's what I was saying. <laughs> Okay, so just gluing magnets here. Compared to the moving, moving face shells, um, I'm sure this is a little mundane, but this is good information. All right. And that's stuck into place because I'm just, there are already magnets on this lens. And that's how these ones, these are temporary magnets that are just kind of holding it in place. <laughs> it's funny that you, uh, I, I, I just noticed the comment from uh, Frickin' Gaming that, that I'm organized. Um, I usually am not very organized, but these, these face shells, especially when I have to get this whole stack of, of lenses is what I have to get done. All of these frames and stuff, um, you know, having so much of that stuff, it's easy to just get totally messy in one workstation. And then I've realized over the last year that I've been making these things that having this hugely messy workstation just makes it so hard to move between the little stations that you spend five minutes at each. You know, you're just sanding something here and then, you know, bending something here and moving between those projects I've found is one of the most difficult things and then setting up your workstation. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to attack everything at once. Um, I've never been super successful at that, but I'm trying really, you know, I want to get these things done. So I'm attacking it sort of like if I had to make a, a chorus line of Spider-Man right now, if there was some, you know, show that need 15 Spider-Man masks, I just need to get them done. I need to get it done and get it out of here. Um, because, you know, I've kind of, it's just been such a monumental amount of work that I kind of have just fallen into the little trap where you look up at the mountain of work and it looks so difficult that it's hard to make any movement or any progress at all. And the, the key there is you just need to look down, look at the ground and just make movement and progress. 
Um, and getting the moving lenses done helped a lot because I, I realized that um, taking the year off from that was really weighing on me as far as my other stuff I was making. I should have finished that mask a few months after I finished the first one, but instead I thought these ASM2 face shells would be super quick, naively, you know, I was naive to think that I'd be able to get them done that fast, but I thought so, and so I got loaded up with orders from all the people basically over the the prior three years that had I had been promising <laughs> face shells to when they went on sale. Um, so that's kind of, for me, it's been a lot of, of growth as a seller. You know, I, I basically started from nothing and that's why I, I've, I've run into so many difficulties um, over the years. You know, I have no real education or anything or foundation in um, uh, uh, running a, a business where you manufacture and sell stuff. And so that's always kind of been my stumbling, stumbling ground. Um, but I want to make it work, so. <laughs> Maximus asked, how super is super glue? It's pretty super compared to other glues. I mean, there are more super glues out there. But as far as a glue that holds really strong and then allows you to, you know, break, break whatever it is you glued if you need to, because sometimes that's key. It's if you make a mistake, you need to break things apart. Oh, I'm like I just glued my finger in there. Ouch. Um, <laughs> but I was able to pull it out, thankfully. Um, kind of demonstrating exactly what I was talking about. Um, oops, got a lot of little drill things in there. Um, okay, so now I've, I've glued all of the magnets onto that shell, um, which will allow me to glue the magnets into the other lens. Try to organize all this stuff at the beginning too, um, so that I wasn't running around like that too much, but I'm still doing it a little bit. What? Really? Um, okay, Chris, I just saw your comment about your, your Annette dying. That sucks. Um, I've, I've run mine for like a solid month now. Several prints that were like, um, much, uh, a lot bigger than, or a lot longer than like five hours. So sad to hear that that happened. Um, I'm curious if you had it in like a, uh, insulated box or something. Cause that's what I've, I've read before that if you're printing like ABS, you do kind of want to encapsulate your printer so that it can stay warm, but that's the, the other side of it. You can't let it get so warm that it's going to roast your power supply or any of the electronics. Um, so I'm sorry that that happened. Um, I would recommend talking to them and seeing if they just replace it or I wonder if you can just buy the part pretty cheap. Um, to answer the question of how did I mold my face shell and lenses, I basically, I started with a plaster bust of my friend Fernando. Uh, I started off of his, his head because he has a more normal sized head than I do. I've got a huge 24 inch head, which is pretty, like I have to buy extra large helmets and stuff. Um, which is also kind of part of why I've started making masks in the first place. No masks would fit me, so I'd have to make them for myself. Um, but uh, I started with a plaster bust of my my uh, friend Fernando, El Fett, because we were making a suit for him. And I sculpted the shape of the ASM-1 shell with oil-based clay. And then I, after casting all that and everything, I just used it again to cast or to sculpt the ASM-2 shell. I just kind of... Um, brought it back out and put some new um, uh, new clay and stuff on it and just sculpted the ASM2 shape. But I did that for both the shape of the shell and the lenses and then just cast them both separately. Um, I did the lenses first because you have to kind of get the lenses all the way done before you can even finish sculpting the shell. You kind of have to pause, get the lenses all the way done, get them sculpted and cast and sanded. And then basically, you know, I had these, these are 
might be the same lens as I used on my sculpt. Uh, I might have had another set actually. These are probably the first finished ones I did. Um, but they've been the masters ever since um, to use with each shell like this to glue on the different components. Is that glued in there? Must be. Okay, so now all the magnets are glued in there, as you can see. No risk of them falling out. Um, then I like to add more glue so that it goes in and gets into every crevice that it's not currently filling so that it gets stronger. I just do like a, a big drop of it up above it so it has to seep kind of into the connection between the magnet and the shell. Then I just use a little bit of paper towel to get the excess off once it's kind of gotten in and soaked into there. You have to be careful because I have noticed before there's a chemical reaction that happens between super glue and paper towel. It can actually burn the paper towel, which is pretty crazy. And the fumes can kind of be bad for your, you know, breathing and for your eyes. I've, I've experienced the sting of super glue fumes hurting my eyes so much in my life from making masks and super gluing stuff inside of a face shell like this and then being excited and just putting it straight onto my head and then the fumes really uh, can burn, burn at your eyes. And it always happens as soon as I put the mask on and the lenses on because then everything's really encapsulated so that's when it, you know, it's hard to get away from it. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I kind of haven't looked at the comments in a little bit. I um, appreciate uh, appreciate you guys watching me build stuff. Um, I've got some cool plans for the future of my stream. If you missed me mention that earlier, I'm gonna definitely be renovating a little bit. I'm kind of dissatisfied right now with my kind of boring gray wall. Uh, I like my glow board, but I need to um, make it a little bit better looking and more professional and stuff. So I've got some some changes in mind for how I'll do that. And then that'll kind of play into some of the other stuff I make and um, do tutorials and stuff on. Oh, that's cool. It shows, uh, shows uh, uh, Kristen mentioned that it show, the newest trailer shows the inside of the mask. The inside of my mask looks really cool. It kind of looks like uh, the inside of Darth Vader's uh, helmet when he's when they're putting the helmet on him in episode three. Um, I'm I'm kind of I'm pretty pleased. I've, I'm sad I can't. Well, not that I can't. It's just not wise for me right now to just open up and show you what the inside of the moving shell looks like because there are a couple of CD. Um, well, no, not a couple. Just one. Super Robot Ninja. He's a he's a pretty well known recaster and scammer. And I have a feeling that if I were to, because he also has his electronic moving lenses that he's been working on for like a year since right after I started working on mine. Um, but he's, you know, he's been proven to recast people's stuff. So I have a feeling if I were to just right now teach you guys how to make my style of moving lenses in a week, he'd be out with his. I mean, it's just kind of the nature of this stuff because you guys might not realize it, but Spider-Man is so super, um, uh, popular. I mean, he's just, he's the most popular s superhero character in the world. And that popularity equals attention and attention basically equals money to a lot of people. It's just like, uh, like, how do I, how do I grab that attention? You know, uh, like, um, and for a lot of people, it's just, well, I'll steal it. I'll steal it. Um, you know, I'll take, take it from someone else and <laughs> someone who doesn't, you know, it's not as much about that. You know, I've, I've created quite a few neat things I feel like, but I look back at my, my YouTube history and I haven't made enough, you know, neat videos to kind of sell this stuff. But, um, you know, I want to change that. I want to do cool videos in the future. But, uh, that's, that's the main reason why I'm not, you know, opening up right away about the, uh, um, uh, how it, how it works and everything. But I will eventually. I'm pretty, pretty certain that I will eventually. And, you know, if it, if, um, I mean, my video for the moving lenses is already gaining steam pretty quick. It's getting a lot of views. Um, but, you know, if it if it kind of like blows up and it's kind of, you know, like a there's a Reddit post or something like that. And it, it's pretty clear that this is this method is 
my method and I came up with it and I like, I, I kind of start to get more subscribers and stuff that, you know, I'll, I'll absolutely open up at that point because then it's, it's less of a worry about someone taking the information and claiming it as their own because they wouldn't be able to get away with that. Um, everyone would just know that it's my style of moving lenses. Um, and so that's kind of, kind of what I'm waiting for. And I know that that's frustrating to a lot of you guys cause it's, uh, you're waiting for the, you want, you want to beat the, the, premiere of the movie. You want to have your stuff ready for that. Um, but I just have to keep in mind that it's, uh, you know, not, maybe not the best idea for me. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Chris just mentioned that I just, I'm kind of looking over comments quickly. Um, Chris mentioned that he's, he's had people claim pictures of his stuff as, as their own. And that can be really frustrating. It really can be so demoralizing to have someone, you know, try to claim your hard work as their own. I've had it happen from a couple different areas and sometimes way more overtly than others. Like sometimes people will take my patterns and just go out there and act like they, you know, pulled off some amazing feat to come up with their own pattern. And then it turns out they just copied mine. <laughs> like how, how crazy is that? Um, but it happens a lot. You just can't let it get to you too much. Um, yeah. So, I mean, a lot of you are, are out there asking, where can I buy it? I want to buy your stuff. Um, just unfortunately, uh, on my website, there's some stuff like pattern files and stuff, but I, I still, you know, I'm, I'm still learning how to get things put out in a, uh, you know, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but like a short amount of time, I need to get my stuff out quickly. I need to stop doing this thing that I've done for years where I take orders and it takes me months and months and months to fill them. It's really, really frustrating to everyone. Um, I've really, I've alienated, it sucks because I, I end up alienating my closest, most reliable fan base. Um, it's kind of what I mentioned earlier, how I kind of, right now with these shells, I kind of have like a dark cloud over my head always, just because I can't, you know, I've fell into the same trap sort of where it's taking me forever to get these done. Um, I don't, when I glue these magnets to the actual lenses, I don't glue directly onto the plastic like this. Cause you see how hard it's pulling right now. That's good for when you have the eventual mask, but I like to plan for the mask. So I put a thick piece of spandex down. And so that kind of gives the adequate amount of space. And then also when it comes time to pull it off after it's been glued, you don't have to pull, you don't have to pull uh, on the glue connection that's new, you can pull from underneath the magnet. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I like to do that. I think I've done that a couple times on the stream already. Basically, I've covered all this stuff on the stream already, but I'm just kind of doing it here and hanging out with you guys because I haven't streamed in a while. Oh, I just noticed you guys talking about web wings. Um, yeah, I do have ideas for web wings. Um, I'll be honest though, I'm a little burnt out on Spider-Man. <laughs> there are other projects that I really, 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 really want to work on. And, and that's a big part of why this stuff is taking me so long. Um, you know, I, I work on all kinds of different projects and not just costumes either. I work on like computer projects and carpentry projects and things like that. And so, um, I love, you know, Spider-Man and I love the Spider-Man movies. Um, and I love the Spider-Man fan base too, but I do feel like I've gotten a little, um, you know, cornered sort of, you know, like I, it's, there's a, an expectation that all I'll do is work on Spider-Man things. Um, and, uh, you know, it's great because Spider-Man has such a, uh, great, you know, fan base and following. I love that aspect so much. And that's, I think that's one of the biggest things that keeps me coming back. Cause it's just an awesome community. Um, even though I'm not the most active member of most communities, this is about as active as I get.
Sorry, I've been missing messages. These messages are flying by. Kind of just catching up here. <laughs> There's tons of comments going by up there. But yeah, um, I do, uh, one of my, my next future projects, I do really want to work on like an Iron Man or a Robocop or some kind of suit like that. I really like working on like robot suits. And with 3D printing, that has just gotten so much easier. So I'm really excited to design and, and work on a suit like that. It's either, at this point, I think I'm either going to work on Robocop or uh, Star Boost, which is one of Iron Man's suits, which is my favorite. It's basically an Iron Man suit that looks like a space shuttle for uh, orbital flight, and it's got a big thruster on the back of it, and I've got a cool idea for the thruster. Um, but uh, yeah, I do, I do really want to work on that. All kinds of things. And then I've also got my uh, Project Chromatophore, which I've been working on a little bit here and there, but I've kind of I've kind of put it to the side while I get these things done, because that's kind of my main project right now in my head. Um, but uh, I need to, I need to kind of clear some space. I need to get these things done so that I can really work on that without being a jerk, you know, who, you know, like I, I can't, I can't justify working on that while I've still got people waiting on these. So that's kind of a big part of why I'm working on these right now. Um, okay, so I've got these guys ready to glue to uh, the magnets, but first I need to prepare the bottom frame a little bit first. I'll use this one. This is just rubbing alcohol, and what I'm doing is I'm removing my Sharpie lines that I put onto kind of note where different things are. Because this, uh, this Sharpie ink can actually get onto your mesh, it can get into different things and mess it up a little bit. Oh, um, Demonic Strawberry just said do a Mega Man costume. Another thing, another thing I'm really interested in working on right now is um, a little bit of uh, game design. Because a cool thing about the Vive um, is that it's really easy to design, design for it in Unity, um, the Unreal Engine. If you know anything about game design or programming, um, I don't, but I'm, it's so accessible. And seriously, the Vive puts you in another reality. Um, and you mentioned Mega Man. Uh, I, got some, I have some cool ideas that I want to do with the Vive eventually. Uh, and I might kind of start posting stuff with that um, because uh, that kind of is the next level of beyond cosplay. It's like in the Vive, you can actually live in a world, you can exist there, and you can have alternate physics. Um, it's so amazing. So I really am interested in that. I've been kind of drawn to that for a long time. Well, I've been drawn to it over the, pretty pretty steadily over the like last year. Okay, so I'm just gluing these magnets to the bottom lens here. So I've got the magnet sandwich or the the lens sandwiched between the magnet th that's glued and then just an extra magnet on top to hold it there. And so I'm going to wait until you know I'm pretty sure that it's it's nice and connected and it should be pretty quick um, especially with that magnet force pinching them into the the lens.
<laughs> yeah, Chris, I know that feeling. Chris just said one of his supports broke on his print. I've had plenty of prints that I had going all night, and then some aspect fails, and the whole thing is just shot. That's part of why I bought another printer. It's because that, that aspect can kind of take a long time, too. Um, uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, I kind of every now and then talk about, like, sales and stuff. But, um, yeah, I, I haven't... I haven't taken sales in a long time, but I want to. I just know that I wind up in these situations every single time. And so it makes me hesitant to ever even accept orders. Um, and so we'll see. I've, I've got some ideas for like 3D printing and stuff like that. And once I'm all caught up, I can't just forget about this stuff for the sake of those orders. Um, uh, one thing I have thought of though, while I'm working on this stuff, what I can do simultaneous to this is print stuff. Um, I know that people have already bought prints from me and they're, they're getting prints made, but one thing I can do is, uh, I, I have the ability to get stuff printed with my, the printer I use, which I'm sorry, I'm a little secretive about because I don't want them to be sort of, uh, swarmed with other people requesting print orders, um, but uh, I might offer the services of being a go-between and printing for people onto uh, colored fabrics, which I know can be pretty difficult, but that that is part of what makes a dye sublimation print look really, really good, because when you print onto white fabric, if you're printing the color red onto white fabric, as the fabric stretches, you see the white fabric in between the red print. And that's why you can see sometimes with dye sublimation suits, they kind of look faded, especially in areas where it's stretching a lot, it looks kind of faded. Um, but uh, if you print onto colored fabrics, like uh, with a red print, you'd print onto a really light red or a red, solid red, and then you don't have to worry so much about that problem. Um, so that's something I'm thinking about. I kind of, I, I, I want to maybe make a post and kind of test the waters to see what people's interest in that would be because I could, I could um, take orders for my prints. I know that some people are interested in that. And then I could also potentially um, take on other people's orders. The biggest thing with that, I think, is kind of the file, managing the file. So I'll have to figure out how um, I would have people transfer the files over to me, and then also how I would deal with my printer with all the files I'd need to give them. But that isn't that much um, if I'm doing a lot of prints at once. But uh, I have thought about doing that in the, the short term because that's something that people have been asking about for like a year or even more. I mean, I haven't done a print sale in ages. I have opened up just my files so people don't have to wait for me. But it'd be nice to have that available, the color printing. Can you see my reflection? That's funny. <laughs> Hey, there's here's how my camera setup works. Hi. <laughs> um, I've done web shooters before. I just noticed some web shooter comments. I did the the web shooters for Amazing Spider-Man One and Amazing Spider-Man Two, but I've never done like classic web shooters or the new ones yet. Um, that's usually later on in the process for me because I only, I only ever need web shooters when I have a full suit. And that's so rare and such a, a rushed thing for me that by that point, I'm usually just slapping the web shooters together out of different pieces and sanding and you know painting everything. Um, Chris asked about website stuff. Um, I went ahead and used Wix. Wix is pretty cool. Uh, I did a lot of research kind of based on like different web services and it seems like it's, it's kind of between WordPress and Wix. And uh, both of them are really good because they kind of have like an app store 
where I was able to add a Spotify app to my Wix webpage where, or not Spotify, um, Selfie. Uh, Selfie is the store, the website that I sell um, my prints on. So I was able to actually just link in my store page just directly to Selfie, which is nice. Uh, the big thing about Wix is that you just kind of get needled and dimed to death. Uh, it was it was okay for me because it's you know my business you know what I'm building, but um, you, you can just definitely get kind of needled and dimed to death. I I just wanted to make sure to have my own website with my own domain and then also have the ability to have control over the ads because that was one thing I didn't want a web service that was going to charge like a dollar a month but then they get all the ad revenue if your site starts to have a lot of traffic to it um, so I was sure to make sure that Wix gave you the ability and it does to insert um, Google ads and other ads I still haven't gotten my website finished yet though I need to I think about that every now and then I still need to update my my timeline and um, add some of my projects there and then get better about just keeping it updated along with everything so there's more of a reason to go there because right now it's just kind of exists oh no oh that's okay it's okay because this is a bottom lens but i just pulled the super glue nightmare mistake i accidentally got a little bit on my thumb and then tapped that lens right there oh that sucks so much. See, this is the kind of stuff that really can make this so hard. It's difficult. Um, it's kind of a lot of points of no return. Like, well, this isn't as bad because I'm just, you know, I've only cut out this lens. I've, well, I've vacuumed this lens. I've cut it out. Now I've added magnets to it. And boom, I have just did a splotch of glue. Thankfully, because this is on the bottom, um, I think that when you've got your mesh and your top layer, you won't see that. Unfortunately, I mean, that's the biggest thing is like, I wish I could give perfect stuff out, guys. I wish, I wish I didn't make mistakes like that, but I do. And I can't, you know, I, I can't afford to like, oop, throw that away. Like, it's just too hard. It's just too much time that gets sunk into it for me to be like, oh, I can't give that to the person. So unfortunately, it's like sometimes you just have to make judgment calls where it's like, oh, I hate that. I hate that that, that might always be, no, okay, it's not really in the, the range of vision. Um, it's kind of out, out enough on the edge that it wouldn't always be in your vision. But it's still a little defect that when, you know, I've, I've, had, I've gotten emails from people before where, they notice a bunch of little defects and they kind of list all the little defects that they notice. And it's like, uh, I, I know I'm, I'm just a person working on my own. Like I do, I do strive for quality, but it's, is sometimes hard to, uh, hit the mark. And you know, it, it would be great if everything I could ship out would be movie, movie quality. Um, but, uh, you know, how, how much did the studios pay for their movie quality costume? Thousands? Several thousands of dollars? Sometimes I think it's kind of unfair how there is sort of this standard where it's like, how come my $250 mask isn't as high quality as the movie one because of these reasons? And it's like, because it's $250 compared to the probably five or $6,000 or something per the other shells that they had to spend. Um... You know, it, it's a it's a pretty big difference there. Um, <laughs> yeah, catching up on comments. Sometimes I go quiet while I I read the things. Uh, Mao mentioned Venom. I'd love to do Venom again. I've done some Venom stuff. You can you can see a picture of the Venom suit I did back in college on my Instagram page. Uh, I've got photos of, of it there and kind of nowhere else. Cause that was, that was back before every cell phone had a video function in it. And so it was a lot harder. You actually had to have like a video camera to <laughs> record, um, way different than today. So I was very, a lot worse about recording my things back then. Um, 
uh, Demonic mentioned that, um, asked about the the idea, uh, sorry, I'm getting kind of, I, I, I need to move on to a new stage here, so I kind of sit here and don't do anything. Um, Demonic asked about the possibility of, like, if I had a team to do prints and stuff. I definitely think that's about where I'm at. I need to basically start a, a bigger, you know, more full-fledged uh, operation around sort of the things I do. It's just, it's hard because even even sitting here and talking about this on YouTube, I mean, it's it's not, you know totally within the realm of law to do what we do, which is hard. You know, you can, there's all kinds of ways you can get around it. Like I could say I'm selling spider guy masks. Um, and also, I mean, it, it seems to me that no one really is getting cease and desists or anything like anyone that sells anything. Like there might be some properties that's, you know, like a Batman or, you know, things like that, that people occasionally, um, get hit with copyright violations and cease and a cease and desist is a letter from a bunch of lawyers basically saying stop what you're doing or we'll sue you and that's usually what you're going to get um, rather than just a outright lawsuit unless they're they're really out for blood um, but uh, that's you know the the step the stage I'm at is I need to like hire people I need to actually have people helping me produce things and helping me keeping, keep track of, of communications. And, um, I'm sure a lot of you are hearing that and like, yes, please do. Cause that's always, always been the, the biggest liability. Basically, as far as the way I look at it, I feel like all of that energy, all of that energy of communications and good business practices and stuff basically goes into my work. It's all there. I don't, I, I don't, ra you know, kind of ration the energy well enough um, and spread it out between the different things I do, um, the, well, the different necessary components. I just put it all into the, the discovery f stage, I, like inventing things. So I kind of need to be able to let other people focus on other stuff while I focus on the stuff I want to focus on. Um, uh, thank, uh, thank you, Brickcraft. Brickcraft said, you do a lot though. Um, I do, you know, and that's, that's some, that's been my biggest, one of my biggest challenges over the last few months. Uh, I think I've really made a lot of uh, headway over the last few months in getting like a website going, getting this stream going. And, um, you know, I think that's kind of one of my biggest strengths is that I don't, I don't like really give up on projects if it's what I want to do. And that's kind of the source of failure. Failure is giving up, um, or dying. If you, if you die or you give up, you've failed. But as long as you don't give up or die, then you'll be able to continue working. You'll be able to continue getting better. And I mean, that's, I mean, that's where people fail is when they're like, I can't do this and they give up. Um, so the key is to just always, always keep working. I haven't really been explaining what I've been doing here. I'm getting ready to sand this because I don't know if you can tell, but there are a lot of little holes that are filled with little hanging chads from uh, if like the uh, vote ballots. They just need to be sanded off. Um, ooh, this is pretty exciting. I'm getting into the uh, vinyl cutting world here in a few days. Um, I've placed an order for a vinyl cutting machine, and uh, it cuts it cuts lots of stuff. Um, and I'm really excited what it's going to do. I, I think I'm going to have a new source of ASM-1 lenses, which is going to be really neat. Um, but uh, every, I mean, like the uh, the shutters, all the different shutter components in my moving lenses, I'm hoping that it'll be able to cut all of those out, which would just be amazing because then I could, um, one thing I'm thinking with the moving lenses is that I could sell a kit, basically all the different components. Cause there's so much construction that goes to it, but it's not, it's not that difficult of construction. It's like putting together a model. Um, you just need to follow the instructions correctly and then do it. Um, there are a few tools you need like a Dremel. Um, and what else? Maybe a heat gun. 
but you can do a lot of the heat gun stuff, which is boiling water because it's melting and bending plastic. <laughs> oh, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in, Faison. Good to see you again. I'm reading comments. Oh, that's cool, Ethan. Glad, uh, glad I inspired you to start. <laughs> well, I mean, I I go in and out with projects with like cosplay, and you know, I, I spend, I go out and I work on other types of projects. I like, I like cosplay. I, I really don't like calling it cosplay, but that I mean, I guess that's what it is now. It's costumes. It's just making costumes. Um, I like it because, especially like armor and stuff like that, because you know the human body is an amazing machine. It's really one of the most amazing machines in nature. And the fact that the, the fact that we are humans, I think, also further, you know, kind of drives us to kind of like enjoying that like armor and you know i really like iron man armor because it's it's just taking the the amazing machine that is the human body and increasing it you know like you know adding abilities and it's it's awesome i think there's just an innate desire for that inside of us and that's part of what has developed all of the technology in the world is just this desire to continue to improve upon ourselves um and I think there's a component of that, like armor building and stuff like that. Um, and that's kind of like a big part of what has always drawn me to this stuff. Um, and Spider-Man, you know, it's kind of weird. Not weird, but n not not as you might expect. But Spider-Man really has that. His suit and his mask and, and all of that stuff really kind of embodies all of that. Like, I think that's a big reason why Spider-Man is as popular as he is. His, his suit has got just such a, a solid design that appeals, especially to, to younger kids early on with the bright red and blue colors. Oops, got to be careful. I just bumped my lens with sandpaper a little bit there. That's funny. Uh, well, I lost the comment. Oh, Demonic Strawberry. Uh, it's funny that you're talking about Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, I loved Dragon Ball Z back in the day. I remember, I have fond memories back when Dragon Ball Z was on Toonami um, of coming home every day after school and throwing on Dragon Ball Z. And it was on every day. Like a new episode would be on every day for months or weeks, I guess. It seemed like months. And they released later that that actually was on purpose. They actually, they padded the episodes so there was more dialogue and more like times when they're like talking to themselves in their mind and, you know, just anything that would stretch out the time of the show. They actually did that, um, which kind of is crazy. But yeah, I've been watching Dragon Ball Super just out of the, the nostalgia factor. It's pretty good. It's interesting to see it again. Oh yeah, um, you guys keep, uh, you've mentioned the uh, that Spider-Man DIY contest a couple times. You know, I'll be honest, there have been, you know, a lot of different things. There's like the, the cosplay show and like Face Off and, you know, all those things. I've never, I've just never really been interested in that. I don't really like it as a competition. Um, and I don't know, I just, it's not really my thing. And then also more specifically, this, this DIY Spider-Man contest. I basically haven't entered that, well, I only heard about it recently, but I, I didn't enter, the, enter that because I, I think they're looking for a little more DIY-ness. I think they're looking for, you know, it's even said in the, in the like, contest description, like, go to, go to your local hardware store and start building. Like, I think they're looking for more of, <laughs> you know, a, a kid that builds his own Spider-Man costume out of, I don't know, t-shirts or something like that, not, not a guy who's been <laughs> making replica Spider-Man masks for years, entering his most recent replica Spider-Man mask. 
I don't think that's quite what they were going for. And that, and I'm not super interested in competing with people over this stuff. I've never really liked it as a competition. I don't really like um, costume contests. Even though I've won some, you know. <laughs> Kidding. But, you know, I just don't, I don't appreciate it as a competition. Because it's subjective. For one thing, it's so subjective. And also, I, I, I've wanted to kind of, like make a post or something like I don't like it when people just kind of bounce back and forth between people's posts and are like oh that's the best you you did that the best oh that's so much better than da 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 like it's just not it's not helpful to the other people it's you know you don't it it, it I I don't think it's something to be obsessed about you know the the quality compared to others it's just like uh, uh, enjoy something for what it is. Try not to constantly be having to measure stuff, you know, by the work around you. Um, I think that has kind of made my, my work a lot happier. Like, it's a happier thing, not having to constantly be in this sort of competitive mindset. And then, you know, I kind of end up just, you know, pursuing the best thing I can you know, the best project I can. But that's just kind of like something I don't appreciate about the whole aspect of it that, you know, it just kind of exists. That's the key. Mr. Killshot just commented, uh, I enjoy it, even though my stuff, you know, doesn't, it might not look the best. Um, I think that's the key. Because, you know, if you, when you're just enjoying doing it and you're not always looking around at, you know, what everyone else is doing and uh, how, is it, is it better or is it worse? You know, you'll have more fun and you're more likely to improve, I would think. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there that the, the competition aspect is what drives them to their best stuff, but... Okay, I've got a thick area in my mesh here that might make this one a little too hard. Oh wait, no, I think I got through it. Okay, a little bit more. And this is my own custom mesh that I cast myself. I've been doing it this way as long as I've been making Amazing Spider-Man 2 masks. But I might switch over to uh, some other stuff, we'll see. But uh, this stuff is really good for the fog-free. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't realize they they took all creative control over it. Yeah, brick craft it it might be um it might be like a decal thing. Basically basically it's um Depending, you know, just a perforated type of vinyl, like a lot of other people use. But it would save me a lot of time, and it actually might be more accurate, too. It would look better. Um, better go get my toothbrush. Not my normal toothbrush, my sanding toothbrush. There it is. What is your question, Maximus? Oh, sorry, yeah, I did see that. What would I do if I was cast as Spider-Man? Um, <laughs> be totally confused how I was cast as Spider-Man. <laughs> that's, that's interesting because it always seems like the, the conversation about Spider-Man is uh, 
you know, as his age, well, not always his age, but a lot of times it's his age. And with Tobey Maguire, when people talk about Tobey Maguire, they're like, oh, he's not a kid. He, he wasn't a high school student at all, which is true. But I still, I liked Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. I think if he was the age he was at in Pleasantville, it would be even better and even more, he'd fit the, the part. Um, but a lot of people haven't even seen Pleasantville that are new into the newer Spider-Man movies and fans of Andrew Garfield. But I could see why Tobey Maguire was cast as Spider-Man just from watching Pleasantville. Cause he plays such a classic, like nerdy teen and really well in that movie. Um, but then he, he grew, he kind of blew up after that. And then he was in Spider-Man. And at that point he was already kind of older and more like a real well-rounded person. So I could see why some people don't like him in it. But I love those Sam Raimi movies. They're like perfect. Just the perfect tone of, you know, like comedy to, well, not comedy, but like a lighthearted sort of comic book feeling to the actual reality of the situation for the characters. And I think they kind of missed, they missed that mark in the other Spider-Man movies, making it too serious and too dire for all the characters and kind of missing the comic book fun elements. They tried in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Like, there are definitely parts I like in Amazing Spider-Man 2, but then, for the most part, that movie's a mess. Big ol' mess. Basically just the costume <laughs> from that movie. <laughs> it's like the only redeeming part in my mind about that movie. E6000 is great. I used E6000 on my first Bubba Fett costume to glue all the armor to the uh, the soft parts underneath. I can still remember that very well in my garage. And I can remember the fumes seemed like they were like so powerful, but nowadays <laughs> my nose is so burnt and damaged from all these chemicals that I don't really even smell the chemicals. Uh, I think Project Filmmaker is asking how much E6000 is. It's pretty cheap. It's in most, you know, hardware section aisles. It's just a kind of tube of glue that looks like toothpaste. And it's only like 3 or $4, I think. And a tube will last you for a while, depending on what you're using it for. Just be sure you have good ventilation while you use it, because it is some fumey stuff. Yeah, I like Pleasantville. I, it's got some problems, but I thought that movie was such a crazy movie. Uh, crazy concept, I guess. That's Don Knotts. That's great. I like Don Knotts. But yeah, you know, that's kind of how Hollywood works. You see you see Tommy Maguire in Pleasantville, and then I think he was in, like, Seabiscuit. I've never actually seen Seabiscuit. Um, but he was in a couple things at the end of the 90s there that kind of boosted his popularity and movie studios you know they need a a proven actor to kind of put up in the main role like that and since he had all those roles and he was young they picked him but you know a movie takes two years to make and so he kind of left that age range and that's kind of what everyone thought like oh he didn't look like a high schooler at all <laughs> also people seem to forget i think it's changed a lot because we started making fun of it but any time before, like, the early 2000s, there was a movie with high schoolers in it, they were always 20-somethings, always. They were never actually high schoolers because there are labor laws for kids under 18 that you have to follow. You can't film as long during the day. Um, um, yeah, and so there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Um, but I think, you know, <laughs> if you've... There are some movies you know, that, that kind of came out around that time. I think one of the biggest ones I would think of is uh, not another teen movie. They mercilessly mocked movies. Oh, and also scary movies, scary movie mocked teen movies that had young adults cast as teenagers. Um, so I think that became a big part of why Sony kind of made the decision to go younger for 
a little younger for Andrew Garfield. He was still, I mean, Andrew Garfield was in his 20s too when he did it. Um, but then even younger with Tom Holland, I think they finally realized like, okay, you can't, you can't fake this like teenage innocence uh, with a 20 year old. But I'm sure they have to deal with labor stuff with Tom Holland. I'm sure it's a little difficult. Or maybe they waited for him to turn 18 or something. I'm not sure how old he is. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Demonic just said, what do you think of a R-rated Spider-Man and an R-rated Star Wars? Um, I mean, an R-rated Spider-Man would be interesting because you'd have interesting stuff like Venom and Carnage and stuff and actually be able to have them doing cool stuff, but it'll never happen. <laughs> I think uh, you, it's pretty safe to say that those are such highly kid kid oriented and then also their businesses spider-man is an industry in and of himself star wars is an industry in and of itself they they pull in so much money just from merchandising and sh tv shows and the movies everything the the amusement parks having the characters all over that they really have to be careful with the um the characters and make sure that they're not like abused or you know they don't alienate some big audience and that's why you tend not to see r-rated movies in general we've had this big long stretch of time where every studio that gets an r-rated movie property like alien or robocop or any of those movies that needs needs to be rated r and they decide to like go this sterilized safe route of making it PG-13 because they're afraid of losing out on audiences. And in doing so, they lose their audience anyway, their their core audience, and that's the, the audience that generates a buzz. And then the whole thing is just kind of forgotten about. Like, there have been so many movies over the last two decades, and they're, I think they're starting to realize their mistakes. And we're going we're gonna to see a resurgence if we haven't already. You know, like Deadpool's rated R. They get that it's like... They can't all all movies can't be geared towards kids and selling toys and stuff. Like sometimes some movies have to be a little more serious and darker. Just no studio is willing to spend a big budget on a movie and then make it R and have it be sort of down to a small audience. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know that uh, Tom Holland was twenty one. That's, I figured, you know, he can't be under 18 because they're, like I said, the labor laws. You have to go and film, like, all day long. And if their Spider-Man had to take off after a certain amount of hours and he had to go and study with a tutor, um, that would be a pretty big deal. Uh, I envy that guy, though. I mean, he's already, he's, he's like, kind of already walking down the Daniel Radcliffe sort of successful young actor path but he's smart he i from the little stuff i've heard about it it seems like he really petitioned marvel and disney to become spider-man and from doing that they hadn't really considered him as much but from doing that they considered him more and that's kind of how he got it so good for him he's not exactly what i'd picture from spider-man but i think that's always going to happen you know you can't you can't please all the fans and also you have to keep updating your property so that it's still relevant for its prime audience, which is kids usually. So kids are always kind of what they're interested in is changing and, you know, evolving. So the character has to as well. Man, I'm really far behind on movies, though. I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't seen the new Alien movie. I haven't seen Wonder Woman. Um, that's something I've noticed I, I kind of do when I have a big to-do list like this. I, I think of the idea of going and sitting at a theater all afternoon, and it's like, really? I could get so much work done. Um, but then, you know, I mean, <laughs> I still struggle to actually just get the, the basic amount of work done, so... I need to get these done. So bad. <laughs> it's, 
it's hard because movies, uh, you know, I, I've, I've kind of just delayed my movie watching cycle so that when a movie comes out on DVD or Netflix, that's when I watch it. Like I watched Doctor Strange um, like a month or two ago. I watched Passengers recently. It's cool because you can watch 3D movies on the Vive and it's insane. It's better than a 3D movie in the theater because you don't have the polarized glasses. Um, the Vive just gives you two distinct screens of the movie and uh, you can see everything. In I mean, you can't get up and like walk around and look around characters, but it gives you a perfect color you know, as good as the rev resolution of the Vive can get, um, vert 3D version of the movie. And I watched uh, Doctor Strange and Passengers like that. It's really cool. All right. So, getting close here on these. Sometimes those little chads don't go away, the little hanging chads. So, I use a push pin, which fits perfectly into the hole. Clears it out. Uh, Tyler just asked how Doctor Strange was. Um, it was a very competent movie. I liked it, but I, you know, I, I liked a lot of a lot of the criticisms were that it was very similar to Iron Man. It kind of felt like a just a safe, like a very safe. All the choices just. They were competent, but it was still like, a, I don't know, it was as good as a Doctor Strange movie I think was going to get, in my opinion. Um, and it, you know, it was fun and everything. It just kind of seemed like a very generic Marvel film, sort of, I guess would be my biggest criticism. You know, they didn't, I don't know, it's it's kind of hard to, to put it into words. All right. So I guess it's time to bend these pieces of mesh. So plug in my heat gun over here. I'm just gonna do this on the edge of the table here. And, uh, oh, that's right, I'm bending mesh, so I don't need to worry about putting it on a surface. Basically, when I bend mesh, I just hold the plastic lens together and the mesh together. I get the other side ready. And then I, I kind of use my fingers as heat sensors so that I know that if, it, if, my, if I burn my fingers too badly, then I'm getting it too hot, because this mesh doesn't need to get that hot. You can see it already bending. I only just sort of started to feel the heat on my fingers there. All right, so that pretty, pretty thoroughly bends it to the shape it needs to be. Easy, at least that stage. Yeah, you guys are talking about um, the PS4 Spider-Man game. I think it kind of makes sense. It sucks because um, it'd be nice if it was on a bunch of different systems. But it makes sense because right now, video games are kind of all Sony has going for them. And their their uh, their hardware in Japan. They sell a lot, a lot of hardware. But their movies haven't been doing great. Um, there's, yeah, their movie studio really has been suffering. So I can understand why they, they probably wanted to keep Spider-Man to themselves. <laughs> he's a, he's a money machine, basically. Basically, if, uh, if a game doesn't come out for PC, I, don't, I usually don't bother because all the console games at this point, PC games are just so much better. You can have higher quality uh, settings and stuff, and a lot of games have mods. Best multiplayer system. Doesn't cost money if you do it on Steam. 
I don't know if there are any that do cost money, but I know Steam does not cost money. There's no subscription fee to play, which is just the craziest thing to think back at, that there were some consoles I used to have where I had to pay a monthly fee to play online just to be online. That's crazy. That money should go towards different video games. And when uh, a game goes on sale, you know, on PC, it usually costs like a dollar. Or sometimes if it's a bigger game, it costs more, but they can go be really, really cheap. Thanks for tuning in, Chris. Good to see ya. William, uh, William asked, when will I put out the files for the Homecoming Eyes? Um, basically, I've, I mentioned this earlier in the stream, so there might be people that are newer and they're not as familiar. Um, I'm just sort of waiting, because if you look down, I only have 6,000 subscribers. No, only. I know that that's a lot, a lot for some people. Um, but, you know, I've been, I've been making stuff for a long time, and it's always been my own you know, shortcomings in filming my stuff and really presenting it well, like a lot of the other, like, professional cosplayers do. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting better about that, but I just need to be careful that I don't, you know, take this really unique thing that I just came up with, the moving lenses, and, you know, kind of just deflate my own tires, basically, by, by just immediately teaching everyone how to make it. And then the other people out there that have 40,000 or 90,000 subscribers, if they were to make it, it's likely that those people see their more popular streamer making it and just immediately think that it's them that made it. Um, and I've, I've had it happen to me a lot where people have that happen and they don't correct people. That's kind of like, you're not, you're not outwardly taking credit for it, but if someone, if someone comes up and, um, compliments a mask that you bought, from another seller, if they come up and say, wow, that mask is really awesome, great job making it, and you just go, thanks, you're, you're tacitly taking credit for the mask, and that's, there, there's a lot of that that's happened um, just over the course of my making stuff, and I've always, I've always kind of facilitated it by selling and, and things like that, but um, I'm kind of just trying to make sure that with the moving lenses specifically, I don't allow that to happen. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I think that it's gonna, it'll be a matter of weeks, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get a little more, uh, recognition in the coming weeks, because it's already getting a lot of views quickly, that video, um, I've gotten like, I think like 15,000 views just in the under, it's been about a week, yeah, it's been a week now, and it's gotten like around 15,000 views, which is pretty good, um, so I think it'll kind of pick up steam, but then once I'm comfortable that it's not going to be you know, someone couldn't just kind of take credit for it. Um, then yeah, I'll be, I'll be happy to let people in because I think it, it's, it goes into like paying it forward. Sometimes you have to pay it forward in life. You have to, you know, all this stuff that I know how to do, I'm, I'm very much a self-taught person. I, I, I use the internet. Um, I did, I did have a lot of really good resources like uh, teachers at, um, the, the college I went to, I went to college for theater and uh, there was a lot of like costume practicum and stuff that I learned stuff from. But uh, for the most part, I've just kind of experimented and worked on my own. And um, yeah, forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying. But yeah, oh yeah, paying for it. So, you know, since I've learned so much just based on. Um, uh, the internet and things like that, that it makes sense to always pay it forward. Like if you learn a lot of stuff from the internet, then it's kind of your responsibility to, um, to teach, you know, to, to go out and teach what you know and what you've gathered from those kind of experiments, the failures you've had. I think that's where I learned the most. I looked the other day, this is a bag of failed frames. All of these are no good. Um, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot of failure. And I have an even bigger box outside. Those are all just recent failures. Um, failure is the greatest teacher. Um, or, uh, like, 
not failure, but um, I don't know, mistakes. I don't remember what that expression is, but um, you know, I, I said earlier that you can't fail unless you quit. So it's not necessarily failure, but you know, those mistakes are just the greatest teacher. So that's the stuff you pay forward, <laughs> the mistakes you've made. Yeah, today I've just kind of been working on stuff. I haven't been as much vocal about, you know, teaching you or explaining what I'm doing. But I just kind of wanted to hang out today since it's been so long since I've streamed. About a month. Um, Robin's a good suit to work on. Uh, there are a lot of, a lot of resources out there as far as like getting masks and stuff. That would be a fun one. These are my fabric scissors. I hate to also be cutting paper, but well, that's fine. Um, I stapled this mesh down because it's so springy and um, you know it moves and changes shape a lot and it's hard to trace onto it and it's also difficult to just get a consistent shape cut out of it. See it's already pulling away up at the top here. But there's one mesh Um, I'm working on uh, lenses right now, so not currently working on a full suit. You know, I want to make a full MCU suit, but at the same time, I mentioned earlier in the stream, I'm just a little burnt out on Spider-Man. Um, I've been working on Spider-Man stuff for years, and uh, I love, you know, I like the challenge. There's always... It's such a popular character that there's always a new challenge. There's always a new suit to be working on or a new mask or something like that. But uh, I want to kind of branch out a little bit and, you know, work on other projects because that's kind of one of my favorite things to do. So um, I have a couple of things in mind. And it's funny because, you know, focusing, focusing on those other things that I want to do sometimes is my greatest motivation to get this done because it's it's kind of like a rocket fuel it kind of propels this work forward just since i know that i have to get this done before i can truly you know move on to working on um projects that uh are not spider-man <laughs> Basically finding a balance. I need to find a, a sort of just a balance where I can get people items that they like or that they want, um, but not, you know, a million of them unless I were to basically like start a business around it. But that's, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the stream, it's difficult to do that because it's not exactly legal, <laughs> especially in the United States. Some of your favorite you know, people that sell like suits and stuff aren't located in the United States and that kind of gives them an advantage because they don't have to, they have their own country's legal system to worry about and typically Disney and Marvel have offices and, um, you know, groups in those countries, but it's easier for them, I think, to get away with it. So that's kind of a, a fear I always have.
yeah, and it seems like it seems like they don't really do anything. I, I, I haven't I haven't heard of anyone getting a cease and desist in a long, long time. If anyone has heard of someone recently getting a cease and desist, I'd be interested to hear about it. But it doesn't seem like they're they're as after that. They typically only enforce that when they have some licensed product that the illegal product is sort of. Um, uh, stealing sales from, but I guess it's not a big enough market making adult replica suits, so they never really go into it other than like master replica stuff and uh, other studios like that. And it's really, really hard to get yourself licensed to sell stuff legally because you have to spend so much money and really, you really have to be a big company, a big distributor already. Because they can make good stuff. <laughs> they know how to make good stuff. It's just, they, it has to be, you have to be able to make it on a scale large enough that you can fill all the orders. Um, Kyle just asked if, while I'm not streaming, if I like to listen to music while I work. Um, I really like listening to audiobooks. I think that I actually, just before the stream, I finished Ready Player One, which is a really cool book. Um, I can't remember the author's name, but I would say it if I could remember. But uh, it was written in 2011, and it's this really cool story about kind of a, a treasure hunt focusing on 80s, uh, you know, iconic 80s pop culture stuff. And it's in the future on this sort of virtual reality um, platform that all of humanity lives on. And I, I just finished that right before the stream, and it's really cool. But uh, yeah, I... I have an audible subscription, which is pretty cool because you get one audiobook a month, and that is just such a cool way to f stay focused while working because you can you have a story that kind of um, keeps you you know entertained and, and moving along, but you don't have to focus on watching anything or anything like that. Um, so I, I suggest that um, there are also free audiobooks out there. If you can't afford audio or Audible, just look, search for audiobooks, and there are a couple apps on the App Store that just are full of like um, uh, public act, public domain stories, uh, older books like classics. But those can be, you know, the classics are classics for a reason usually, and so those can be. Um, good to watch. Um, unfortunately right now, uh, yeah, I just noticed YouTube's comment. Uh, unfortunately th these are the lenses kind of all finished. They're, they're still not for sale, uh, cause I'm so far behind. Uh, I just need to figure out, you know, a balanced way of getting these out there without, uh, overloading my own you know, to-do list, because it's just so impossible to run a big major business just all on your own. But uh, I do want to get it out there, because I, you know, a big, big part of why I get these things out there in the first place is because I get so much interest in it like that. There's people who want um, to, uh, to have, have this stuff for themselves, because that's, that's what made me start doing all of this is the the desire to have it for yourself and have it in your hands and it kind of makes it real it makes it tangible um so i like to facilitate others in that and you know it doesn't it doesn't hurt getting a little bit of uh funding because it's hard uh as a sort of an artist or, or an artisan you know i do theater and stuff like that so that's not the kind of profession that like pays your bills while you're just starting out and learning, you know, you need, you need side employment, you need odd jobs and part-time work. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, I've, I've kind of had to deal with a lot starting out early on. And so it's, it's tempting, you know, to kind of move towards this not super legal <laughs> area of selling things. Cause it, the thing is, is that if I were to do this in a legal way, I'd need to create my own character. But that is just, it's not impossible, but it is so difficult after decades and decades and decades 
uh, after some of the most popular characters have come about and been establishing their their fan bases, it's so difficult to create your own character these days and and you know get out there and, and get into the mainstream and and have enough of a fan base that you could make a living off of like the merchandising and stuff. Um, there are a lot of problems right now too with intellectual uh, intellectual property laws. Um, typically when the, when the system was designed, you could get a copyright on something, but it would only last a little while. It would only last like a decade or two, I think it was, or maybe a little longer than that. Enough time for you to make your money from your idea. But then after you've made your money from your idea, it doesn't belong to you anymore. It exists in the popular culture. Think about Spider-Man. He is a a component of our culture at this point. He is huge. He's very popular. Oh, sorry. I haven't looked at the the comments. Uh, Sorry, you got to go, guys. Thanks for tuning in if you did. Um, But anyway, yeah. So it's it's just crazy that um, our, our intellectual property law is crazy in this country. Basically, Disney has been lobbying the government every time Mickey Mouse's trademark or uh, his his copyright is about to expire. They lobby the government and they get that expanded. So now it's going on to you can have a copyright for 150 years or something like that because Disney has to be the only one making money from Mickey Mouse. Even though the way the system is designed, when when something enters popular culture like Spider Man, which is kind of why why I'm saying this, it becomes it it, it it's a component of society. So it's something where, you know, it's like all people care about. All of you guys, you love Spider-Man. You you're not as likely to go out and look at people creating their own custom characters. It's so difficult to compete with that. So it's kind of like at this point, <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to 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 do this kind of stuff and then also do it you know, not not infringing on that kind of crazy copyright law. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm surprised my phone has lasted this long. Usually on these first-person streams, I go until my phone goes kaput. Okay, so those are about ready to be glued together. Yeah, that's the next step. It's always moving on to the next step that kind of stops me up a little bit. Because every time it's a little bit of a point of no return. You have to stop and make sure, okay, did I do everything right? Is everything glued together? Is everything trimmed? Um, Oh, that's funny. Marvel Boy Fly came in with, did you see the lenses from Super Robot Ninja? Yeah, I mentioned him earlier in the stream. He's 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 a scammer. He's the type of guy that will recast someone else's work that he's purchased and then claim it as his own. Go out there and claim it as his own. I think even the, the face shell that he built his moving lenses from, he, uh, he stole... Well, he didn't steal. I'm sure he bought it, but I'm, <laughs> I, I've never seen him credit the people who made it. I mean, he's, he's the type of person who's just fine with you thinking that he's made everything that he shows you, um, even though he has not. And so that type of person is really just one of the worst. Um, and the fact that he's got such a following, even though he's done that, that he, he, he gets subscribers and stuff, I, I don't know. It's crazy. I think that we need to be a little bit better as a community to kind of Watch out for that, and I mean, I, I know that I'm I'm no totally innocent person because I've have a lot of people in my wake that wait for stuff, but I never like steal other people's stuff or anything like that. My stuff is always like my my issues are always just from my own dumb stuff, but not like stealing designs or anything like that. But this guy steals stuff, and so it's unfortunate that. It's just gonna no one no one realizes it. I I'll say it. I mean, if you if you like that guy, you should probably unlike him and not follow him because he's a thief. <laughs> you kind of can't trust anything he does. Um, but yeah, I I think it's it's basically the only the only moving lenses I've really seen are me, Super Robot Ninja, and 
Lens Factory HK. And Lens Factory HK is different. He's cool and you know he works on his own stuff. And as far as I know, he could be the same situation as Super Robot Ninja, but I don't know. So I'm not, I'm definitely not saying anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, he's, he's cooler and he's, he's also po- tagged me in some of his posts about his moving lenses. So he's, he's definitely a lot cooler than um, uh, Super Robot Ninja, who basically is just a scammer. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever, it's just kind of the way it is. This, this sort of, uh, attracts people like that. I've noticed over the years. Um, yeah. So time to glue. You have to be careful because you don't want to make you want to make sure that your lenses are not so tightly pressed together um, that it. I don't know what exactly it even does, but it looks like there's moisture in the lens sometimes. If I if it's too squished together, it, it kind of creates this circle. I don't know if you can. It's kind of happening right there, um, but it creates that circle and. It's just from the high pressure, just squeezing all the materials together. So I just make sure um, that it's not totally squeezed together. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Maxter asked uh, if if he thinks Peter Parker could have made a costume as good as me. Yeah, I definitely think he could have. Um, I think I think uh, it would look it would look a lot more like kind of my prototype ASM2 suit that I did with like puff paint and just regular spandex and because that's kind of all you'd need. Um, it's hard to because if you were Spider-Man, I mean we view Spider-Man as a you know his his suit is this presentable thing, but I feel like if you were actually Spider-Man, you'd probably want more of like a a Batman suit, really. Uh, that's what I've always kind of thought is, is unfortunate, is that the, the reality is that if you were Spider-Man and you had your, those abilities, you'd still probably want to dress like Batman. You'd want dark colors. You'd want to be able to like kind of ninja around and blend into the night. Um, you'd want pockets and uh, pouches and you know space galore for little gadgets because, I mean, if you're you're fighting against people. I know Spider-Man's got his powers and all that, but I mean, he doesn't have any pockets at all unless it's a cartoon where he's randomly got magic pockets. Or I guess the new movie's got his like kind of pouches on his waist, but those are web cartridges. So that's always seemed a little impractical to me. And I think that's kind of important, you know, when you're you're approaching a, something like that. Um, it's like, do you even... Do you even acknowledge that he made the suit? The Raimi movies didn't. The Raimi movies just went from him designing the suit, the final suit, to having it. And I think that worked fine. Because you don't you don't really need to get bogged down in that that thought of like, how do you do it? How do you make it? Um, he just has it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, he did it. He's super smart. Yeah, and that's the other thing. If you did make a spandex superhero costume and you were like swinging around and fighting villains, you'd be it'd be ripping nonstop, like in that first Amazing Spider-Man movie when it rips like on his chest. It would just be like this patchwork, ripped apart Spider-Man suit by the end of things. And you know you wouldn't have time to always be building a brand new suit. You'd you'd probably most Spider-Man things I've seen show that he does not have a lot of free time. He's too busy making money to live and then also fighting crime. <laughs> yeah. No, instead it takes six months <laughs> to make a suit. Ton of effort. I guess it depends on what suit you're making. Some suits don't take that long. But it's usually a ton of effort. More effort than you think it will be. All right. 
kind of let that one set up. <laughs> That's funny. Demonic Strawberry said Albert Einstein is a superhero. It'll make millions. Isn't Rick... Rick Sanchez, basically that. <laughs> He's sort of like a superhero. Or like a, a malevolent god, I guess, is how they describe him. <laughs> or a demon. Just getting everything lined up. A uh, regulator just asked, how difficult is sewing? Um, sewing can be difficult. You know, I guess I'll just talk from, you know, I've been in classes. I've been in basically two classrooms where people learn to sew. And usually you learn to sew on a sewing machine, kind of like you learn to drive. A sewing machine is a lot like driving. Um, you need to kind of watch ahead and steer everything appropriately and, and use the right speeds and everything. Um, so there is definitely a learning curve to sewing. And then also spandex is a little little bit even on top of that. Like you should learn to sew like regular materials and then jump into spandex because spandex, the, the stretchiness of spandex can make it difficult to sew. Yeah, Don. Don said that uh, if there really was a Spider-Man suit, it'd probably just be more like the ones he makes, his homemade suits in the movies. And that's probably their what they get at with those those bits. It's like, okay, here's here's a kid in a suit. I know you guys want to see the the real suit, but here's what a kid in a suit actually looks like that he made himself. Okay, uh, my phone might die here in a little bit, so if I if I drop out unexpectedly, that's why. I think that's how I ended the last PvP stream, too. <laughs> I like to just stream as long as my phone can take it. So it's getting about to a uh, hummingbird o'clock. Basically, it's sunset. I've got a hummingbird feeder and they all go wild before they go to bed. Oh, Kristen asked, what, what's my favorite animated Spider-Man show? Definitely the 90s animated Spider-Man show. I loved that show. Had some cool stuff. I still remember the, the like, Venom saga and all of those. The human spider. I think that was one of the best tellings of Spider-Man ever. And that was another one of those ones. I think he was more in college in that one, but he still looked like a 30-year-old and not like a, a pipsqueak or anything. <laughs> it looked like a TV actor or something. All right, letting these set up. 
This will probably be as far as I get in the stream today. I probably won't bend these lenses and glue them as well because I have to let this glue set for a little while. And I also think my battery's pretty close to dead. All right. Wow, 37 viewers. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're just tuning in towards the end, um, thanks for watching. Um, I just, this is what I do in my live streams. I just kind of chat and answer as many questions as I can, as I can notice. And uh, yeah, just kind of hang out and, and show you how I do what I do. I think it's a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it so far. Oh, something went wrong. Well, that was just on my iPad. I wonder if that's the stream. Maybe my phone's dying. Oh, no. Hmm. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. Might, maybe the stream went dead. That wouldn't make sense. Um, still says I'm live. Can you guys see anything? Hmm, that's weird. Oh well. Um, yeah, so I'm getting pretty close to the end of this stream anyway. Um, right now I'm just bringing up my uh, YouTube page before I end the stream. I wonder if I'm just totally not live anymore. Hmm, that's weird. Oh well, I guess only I can't see and see and hear me. Um, but the uh, stream's basically coming coming to an end here. Oh, there it is. Here we go. All right, there we go. I just wanted to bring that up before I ended the stream so that I can copy all the comments because uh, that's one of the biggest things I don't like about YouTube. Apparently Twitch allows you to save the comment stream for watching later, which would be really cool so you guys could see what I'm, um, who I'm like responding to and stuff. Uh, but I usually save the comments anyway. Um, but anyway, since I'm about to end this stream, I I could always look back at the, the moving lenses. This thing is... Pretty neat. Um, pretty satisfied with how that all ended up turning out. Definitely a unique challenge. Um, uh, I still haven't fixed this other lens. It's still doing the same broken stuff it was doing from the other stream. One problem is that I can't, I'm at a point where I can't really just go in and fix the one specific little component that broke. I kind of need to back up and reinforce all of the components that were built that way. Because if I do just kind of fix that one little bit, I know that the, then it's just the next weakest link that's gonna break. Um, and that's what a lot of this, this process with the moving lenses has been like. It's, if a component isn't strong enough, you just have to go through and make it stronger. Um, that's how engineering is a lot. Um, and I, I've learned a lot even just while making this. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was a definitely a fun project, and I do want to uh, give more information and everything. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Maximus asked how hard it is to squeeze the clamp. It's not that hard. It's all it's all about leverage. You're squeezing further away than where the wire is moving from the pivot point, so it is a lot like a bike brake, a bicycle brake, um, and I think that works well for the the control of the eyes. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that's good. Uh, it was super fun to sit here and kind of work on these two lenses and uh, catch up with you guys. Um, also, I mean, while I'm here, um, I will try to do a more, stick to a more regular stream schedule, but right now, even above the streams, my priority is getting these done. Uh-oh, my phone might be dying. Um, my priority is getting these done. And then I, I also want to make some changes to kind of the way the, the stream is done. Like it'd be, it'd be neat if I could set up a camera and have me in my workshop, and I've done a couple streams like this, but have more of just like a relaxed 
workshop view with the other camera angles and have it be an easy thing for me to, to come in and set up. Um, the phone on my face works really well, but it's not, you know, it's not the professional level I still want to get to. Um, and so, um, yeah. And so when I come back, I, you know, I'll, I'll come back and do more streams. Cause it, like today it was just fun hanging out and chatting with you guys. Even if I am rehashing stuff I've done in other streams. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was fun, fun hanging out with you guys. Um, yeah, we'll definitely get a tutorial eventually. I've mentioned a couple times over the course of the stream. I just want to be sure that I don't, you know, teach how to make it and then it just kind of disappear, you know, it gets away from me and it's, um, you know, just sort of like it, it's something I've kind of noticed is, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I worked hard to, to make the face shell, you know, initially like face shells weren't really something you got with your costume for the, before I kind of came in and, and was working on facials and lenses and stuff, usually it was just like urethane lenses that people would glue onto their costumes. Um, I worked really hard to kind of figure out how to do the whole magnetic lenses and the face shell. And obviously they do it in the movies too, but it wasn't as much in the realm of um, my cosplay and people going to conventions and stuff. And so I worked hard to, to get that ready. And then basically as soon as I was done with it, I started selling it and like five, four or five months later, my competitors all, you know, had very similar, they looked like the construction was very similar. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it kind of, I had, you know, I'd worked so hard and I, you know, I felt like I deserved a bit of recognition from that, but then it just kind of poof, it was gone. It was just this kind of standard thing, just a standard thing that everyone was doing and no one really deserved credit for it. And so that's the, that's the kind of situation particularly I want to avoid this time around where I, I sell it right away or I teach you how to make it right away. And then you, um, or not you, uh, someone out there goes out and is, kind of takes passive credit for it. And then another person goes out and takes passive credit. And then it just kind of becomes this thing that I can't, I can't get recognition for my own work anymore at that point. Um, which is really, really frustrating. You know, um, when you work, when you work really hard for quality and you can't get more than 6,000 subscribers, it's pretty tough and frustrating. Um, but I know that it's, it's my own shortcomings that, that, you know, the lack of videos and stuff I have for my work that kind of lead to that. Um, so I'm working on, on getting better with it. Um, but just specifically with the moving lenses, that's why I haven't, uh, taught anyone how, how to use it. Um, uh, Kristen asked, I saw her, her comment earlier, uh, are you going to incorporate the levers into the, the costume or she just said into the gloves? And yeah, that's actually, um, I had a friend a while ago have that idea that the controls could be web shooters. I got uh, an email like a week ago. I, I've had I've had like two or three people mention that since I released the video. Um, now that people know how it's controlled, um, but yeah, I had a friend that actually had that idea of the web shooters. It'd be a little difficult with the web shooters because you'd have to kind of get leverage, but you could have each control kind of sticking out. And you, you know, you would kind of compress it with your fingers and then it would just kind of be done in your hand. The only thing is that would make your web shooters big and bulky in order to get the, the amount of leverage you need to get. Um, but uh, I have thought of that. And then I also think that if you just have it hanging out of the back, like usually there's a U-zip on the back of a costume. If you just have the levers kind of hanging out the where the U-zip meets in, meets in the middle at the back of your belt... Um, I did that the one time I wore the full costume and no one noticed it. No one even paid attention to it. Um, it's really not something people notice. It's even in the video that I, I recorded from last year. And, and basically no one even noticed that until I started pointing to it. And then even then it took a while for people to, to notice it. Um, um, yeah. And if there's, if, if you have other methods like, uh, in the face shell, uh, my method goes, goes right down to the chin. Um, so I don't know, I wouldn't have a lot of room to control it with the chin or anything. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I really view it as puppetry and puppetry is your hands. You know, you're a lot of, t most of the time puppetry you're controlling, like there are puppetry masks out there. Like, um, one of my kind of inspirations for the project was, uh, there's a stand up comedian, 
uh, who does these masks, these puppet masks that move on people's face. So basically, she turns people into mer- um, uh, dummies, uh, not marionettes, um, whatever those, uh, those dummies are, the ones where you stick your hand up the back and, and uh, move your hand. She basically turns people into those by putting the mask on them, and then she squeeze her, squeezes her lever, and it makes the, the mouth open and close. Um, she even has a video where she's doing it, and then it breaks. And so in the middle of her, her act in front of an audience, the mouth breaks, kind of like how my, my lens broke in my last stream. And then she kind of just had to go with it. Um, but uh, um, that was kind of one of my, my uh, inspirations with the puppetry aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I think, it's, I think it's totally okay to just use your hands to operate it. Um, Yeah, it's funny, Ren, a lot of people, based on that, that first video of the moving lenses, a lot of people thought that the, the jaw was in control of it. And part of that is because I was chewing gum at the convention that day. And so my, my chin was moving a lot. And I think a lot of people um, uh, guessed that because of that. And uh, that's, that's actually not the case. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's other ways you could do it, like to get it to follow your eyebrows and, and stuff like that. But, you know, that's just not my area of expertise. So I think, you know, having your hands control it like a puppet is totally sufficient. And then it also gets, there's no battery packs, there's no control boards, there's none of that stuff to, to deal with inside the face shell or, you know, on, on the costume anywhere. Um... Okay, guys, so it was really fun. I've been streaming for like two hours now, I think. Um, but yeah, it was really fun getting to, uh, to catch up with you guys again. It's been a, like a month since I've done a stream like this. And um, I have to go because I'm pretty sure my, my phone is about to, uh, about to kick the bucket. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. I, I don't chew gum that often, but yeah, there are video, a lot of videos of me in Spider-Man costumes chewing gum, apparently. Um, um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it was super fun hanging out with you. There's a lot of viewers right now, which is pretty pretty crazy. I, I, was, I was hoping that would happen after I finished the moving lenses. Um, I think that's kind of uh, increased my, kind of my... Uh, uh, I don't know, the stream's reach a little bit. It's increased the stream's reach, at least, just because it's something that kind of um, leads straight to these streams. But yeah, I'm excited to uh, for the future of streaming, so I'll be back again soon. Maybe not Thursday, but then again, maybe Thursday. Who knows? Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Glad, uh, glad you could uh, see it. And if it's your first stream, hope you enjoyed it. And um, you can always you can always come back and watch these streams again because they're they're up on my YouTube channel. So it's kind of like a podcast in that way. Basically, uh, you know, I've I've got my uh, streams set up that way. Here's some hummingbirds for you to uh, end the stream on. This is my garden. <laughs> yeah. So I think that'll be it for today. Um, yeah. All right. I've already. <laughs> exited the video. All right. Thanks for watching guys. And, uh, tune in again.